classes in Zoom part two, activities for engagement and learning in synchronous meetings. Hello, I'm Milan Paulson, teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College. This is the second video of a four part video series featuring information and ideas about classes in Zoom. The focus of this video is on activities in remote synchronous meetings that promote engagement and learning for students. See the other videos in this series for information on basic tools for in Zoom and how to create and deliver lessons in Zoom. Please see the links list that accompanies this video series. To begin, I invite you to pause this video for two minutes for a brief reflection. Using an electronic document or a piece of paper, answer the following questions. First, how do the circumstances of my course, the learning outcomes, the students, etc., shape how I might use Zoom for learning activities? Second, do I wish to make my remote synchronous Zoom meeting structured, which focuses on lesson delivery, semi-structured, which focuses on student practice and exploration, or unstructured, to provide office hours for opportunities for students to ask questions? Whichever remote meeting type you choose, Conestoga recommends about one hour of synchronous time per week in Zoom, with other course hours to take place asynchronously in the LMS or on another platform. So you may divide lesson delivery and group activity across different tools. You don't need to do it all in Zoom. The remainder of this video will share ideas for different activities for student engagement and learning using the various features of the Zoom room. Short meetings and icebreakers to begin are used in the first few weeks so that the class may become familiar with the learning environment and with each other. Energizers can help keep students engaged, focused and motivated. Closers can be used as a lesson summary. All can be used to reinforce expectations about how to communicate in Zoom. These brief activities may be modified for different time durations and class sizes. Do not record act these activities because they involve students sharing personal information. Here are some examples of quick activities that you can use in your classes to promote attention, engagement, and class rapport. Ask yes or no questions, such as who's read a book over the weekend. Invite students to add to the Zoom group chat one word, a web photo, or a gift that describes their feelings or what they did on the weekend. After a lesson, have students share one thing they learned that surprised them. Use the annotate tool for word association brainstorming on a course topic, or give students a chance to draw on a whiteboard for two free minutes. If students are using video cameras, ask them to touch a blue object on their desk, then share that object with the class. Or randomly announce, find a pen, and the last to show their pen in their camera loses the race. Multimedia can have high production value and can save time for course content development for faculty. It can also be highly engaging for students. Videos and podcasts on course-related topics may be played in a remote synchronous class using Zoom. Either the faculty can show a video or podcast on a shared screen and then pause the video for discussion, or participants can receive a URL and watch the, vi the video or podcast on their own device, making note uh, of discussion questions. In addition to sharing multimedia for discussion, students may be polled using web-based tools outside of the Zoom tools. The Mentor Meter poll is a free tool and it's simple and it can collect and present answers to a wider range of questions, including scales, image choices, rankings, and word clouds. The poll can be shared in advance of the lesson and can be easily reused across multiple meetings. This slide lists a number of additional web-based tools that have at least free or a basic version. And they can be used for comments, for mind mapping, quizzes, and collaboration. These tools may be used by providing links and instructions to them through the group chat and by showing how they are used with a screen share. On my slide is a list of tools recommended by teaching and learning. It is totally optional to use additional tools and faculty must strive to use tools based on fit for use. Please keep in mind factors when selecting a tool to use with students including accessibility and inclusion, cost, it should be free, purpose and objectives for learning, different hardware and interoperability, difficulty of use, 
abilities of the students to use the tool, faculty ability to provide instructions, demonstrations, and examples, providing options and alternatives for students who can't use the tools or are uncomfortable with them, and the ability to, to support students, as well as time to learn and use within the context of the course. These tools can be great for learning, but when in doubt, simpler activities are better. The activities discussed may be delivered in large groups as well as in small groups using breakout rooms. Breakout rooms in Zoom are good for stimulating discussion, ensuring more equitable participation and collaborative learning. And Zoom enables the meeting host to create up to 50 rooms per meeting, then divide participants manually or automatically into them. Once in the rooms, faculty can send instructions and time reminders, and students can invite the faculty member into the room for help. The same breakout rooms may be used multiple times in the same meeting, and with some pre-planning, rooms may even be pre-assigned in advance. Here are some breakout activity examples. Faculty may provide instructions for think-pair-share reflections, brainstorm ideas and prepare students to share with the full class, listen to a podcast or watch a video and discuss directed questions, do an internet search to find solutions to problems, read a blog, post and discuss, complete an activity using a collaborative document. Breakout room activities may be enhanced using collaborative documents. Collaborative documents are shareable and co-editable Microsoft Office 365 files that live in the cloud. A OneDrive folder containing multiple files may also be shared with students. Using a collaborative document means that everyone with access to the document may see and add to the same document no matter where they are. Collaborative documents are useful for collaborative activities and for enabling group note-taking. The links for shareable docs are active to anyone who receives the link for one year. These documents may also be downloaded to one's own device. See IT Conestoga for more information on how to use Office 365 collaborative documents. Here is a brief overview and example in 10 steps of how to use a collaborative document to support a breakout room activity. First, screen share the collaborative document with the large class. Next, share the collaborative document link to the group using the Zoom group chat. Then, describe the breakout activity, its goals and instructions, as well as how to use the shared document. Set a time limit, then open the breakout room and ask students to join their small groups. Send time reminders to rooms as you go and observe the document completion by groups. You may need to visit group breakouts if you're seeing the document isn't being created. After the assigned time, close the rooms and then screen share the document that has been completed by each of the groups in a large group setting. Then debrief with the whole group and finally remind participants to download the document and or post the, the document download for Econ in Econestoga and Teams. Here is a slide, a summary of the traits of effective synchronous remote meeting activities for student learning. Over the course of a live remote class, activities should be timely, quick and self-paced, but insufficient time to complete them along with breaks. They must be organized, practiced and repeated, giving logical instructions, especially for shared documents. Engaging, they must be able to provide opportunities for icebreakers, energizers and ways to share information. Very use of audio and visual in small and large groups. Inclusive, repeating and visualizing instructions and giving alternatives for participation. And tested, rehearsing their use in advance and showing examples and explaining how the activities will be run with a plan B of an alternate engagement option or activity. Now that you've seen a range of different possible large and small group activities in Zoom using different tools, I invite you to pause this video for two minutes of a brief reflection. Conduct a Google search for breakout rooms in Zoom or find the link on the link list using an electronic document or on a piece of paper answer the following questions. Will your lesson be structured, uh, semi-structured or open or a combination? How will the activities achieve the learning outcomes for your lesson? How might you use breakout rooms for small group activities? 
how will you provide lesson uh, instructions, support, and alternatives for students? And for more information on group activities for learning and on remote icebreakers, videos, polling, quizzes, as well as inclusive design, visit the Faculty Learning Hub for tips, tlconestoga.ca. Continue to the next video in this series to learn more about developing activities for engagement and learning in your classes delivered in Zoom.